what I have found about the real estate industry and, and that I love about the real estate industry, like if you get into the restaurant industry or the gas station industry or whatever it might be, you're, you're, you're so competitive with your competition, right? Like you're, 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 you're trying to do everything you can to be the number one and this and that. What I have found has been amazing in, in the real estate industry is nobody hides anything. Here's my playbook, take it and go, right? Like, I hope I can help you to get better because I can't do all of the real estate. I can't win all of the real estate. There's too much of it out there for me. We can both win. And, and so I've been able to take my relationship building, my experience with that, and what I do, my, I mean, my niche is I buy property without using any of my own money. I mean, the three sexiest letters in real estate are OPM, right? Other mm -hmm. people's money. So my coach, my, you know, my coach, basically something that's always resonated with me is you can always run out of your own money, but you can't run out of other people's money. Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Real estate experiment. What is happening, y'all? Today, I have the pleasure of having this gentleman here. And I want to give a little bit of context uh, before I give this gentleman his introduction. Because, you know, speaking of masterminds, we were just talking about this offline is... You know, we connected in a mastermind and the power of the masterminding is, is just so critical. Uh, I invest in multiple masterminds myself. You guys know this. Counts, just came back from a mentor mental uh, conference there with, with Jesse Vasquez this week. You guys know what was out there kind of creating the network, uh, forming strategic partnerships. And we actually connected back in. Uh, this is crazy because this is, if I'm correct, in uh miami of what 2020 geez is it really 2022 yeah this was back in 2022 already wow it was. time is time is flying and uh message gentlemen very genuine we hit it off uh we were talking you know i remember a few highlights talking about the bar this was a uh, michael shogun's uh mastermind uh michael shogun has been a big you guys know episode 91 he was the one who planted the seed uh if you didn't know um, into uh, what has turned into a short-term rental experiment that has deep roots now and deep connection. So it's always a pleasure to tie in the loop to have a real estate investor, short-term rental owner, and operator who uh, has a very uh, unique niche. And that's what I love about this industry. Um, and, and with that, it comes with a, a deep, deep roots within the background. I know you have a corporate background, you have banking, uh, corporate banker, serial entrepreneur. You just told me your wife's an inner circle. So I know it's within the family, under the roof. There's constant growth. You know, there's, um, and, you know, you've created a very, uh, a very unique brand in a luxury rental uh, market. You know, there's niches within niches. And, you know, as founders, Crescent Retreats, um, you are getting your hand into some very interesting, unique assets that I want to talk about with you here. So without further ado, I want to welcome Fuad Bazi here to the lab with us. And we have some connections as well. We we're just talking about that. We've got a little Middle Eastern kind of connection. You know, we we're talking about how, you know, you're Lebanese originally. I don't know if you're first generation or you're born and raised. Were you born and raised, Fuad? I was born here. I was first generation born here. Yep. First generation. We got another first generation baby in the building. Yeah, uh, and then uh, there's a sweet connection here because my wife's uh, Armenian. You guys know, shout out to Celine. So, without further ado, man, welcome to the lab, man. How you doing today? I'm excited, man. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. Doing great, brother. Always doing great. It's always a great day. Yeah, I got to give you a special shout out too. I didn't mention this. Uh, you're also in uh, a co-author of the Hospitable Host uh, Volume Two. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, that's sir. that's pretty dope, man. And great little um, project. What's that? Great little project. Yeah, that's a, it's a great project. Speaking of network, I mean, you you have people who are from all skills, you know, coming in from uh, whether they're owners, operators, managers. It's just so it's it's a really good book. You know, uh, being part of Hospitable Host, the first version, I just got a chance to connect with some people. You don't realize that people are doing some amazing things, whether you know their name or not. And I feel like it really highlights the kind of like the million, the, the millionaire next door type thing. Uh, like whether it's your next door neighbor or, or a person that has a huge portfolio that you may have not known of. Uh, I think, um, uh, you know, is, we've done a, done a really good job of kind of putting that book together. So shout out to Jody Sterling. Uh, she uh, really put another beastly roster featuring our, our, our guest right now. So um, let me ask you, Fuad, so how did you, you know, we talked about the, the background a little bit. 
I could see here just looking at your history, you obviously share these core values that I connect with as well. So it's no no chance. It's not by chance. Uh, let's not let the serendipity go to waste. Where you talk about health, I know you're wearing it right now. Peace, love, and travel. Uh, that's literally it. what I I align with that. So there's no re- there's obviously a reason why you're here in the lab today. But tell me about a little bit, you know, your relationship, I guess, with with those core values. Yeah. When you feel like you should really start to instill them. At what point in your life did those become very aware and you became aware of those core values? You can kind of tell, you know, it'll give us a little bit of context as to how this empire was built. You know, health, peace, love and travel. I don't know anybody in humanity that if you told them that is the new you that they wouldn't choose that. Right. Health, peace, love and travel. Like it's just and it's it's just so natural. It's so organic. And what I found, I mean, I do, I live my life. I I wake up every day. I work out. I do get my breathing exercises in 5 a.m. I freezing cold showers to start the day. Mm. You know, I feel like when I'm, when I'm agitated, when I'm not, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm just kind of not on my happy go lucky kind of personality, that's just natural for me. It typically is correlated with a lack of routine on my health, whether it's nutrition, exercise, whatever it might be. Um, and then, and then all of that, when you, when you just take the health and the peace, it's just so easy to love. It's just so easy to lead with love. You know, even when Mm -hmm. you're irritated, even when you're mad, when you on the phone with the customer service reps, it's not getting you what you want. It really doesn't go well when you're just yelling and and cursing them out. Right. You just lead with love, like all the time. And you always end up kind of finding your answer and then travel. Like I, and, and I use travel, not just like touristy, go to a hotel kind of thing, right? Like travel the world like go experience humanity go experience cultures go experience countries it is so important and i think we get so caught up in boundaries um and boundaries people hear me say this all the time boundaries are just inorganic they're just things that are man created but as, as a human being i would i didn't choose to be born here right like that was mm-hmm. god's action that was god's will so whether i was born here or in africa or in pakistan or in china it doesn't matter like go just go like this whole thing is yours and go and, and create impact and, and, and see the world and, and love everybody. So what, what I found was when I first launched this business 19 months ago, I was doing the normal, uh, you know, hospitality thing, like luxury experience, you know, blah, 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 who cares? And it's like, I still absolutely embody all of those things into our luxury brand, but I didn't want to be carrying a set of core values for my business that were different than my quote, my personal core values. Mm. And so by taking health, peace, love, and travel, which is how I live my life and incorporating them into my business, I just live my life now. I don't work anymore. And so it's it, it, it really is just to kind of integrate everything together. Mm. I love that. It's... Um... It's interesting. I, I call it, you know, in my life, people are like, oh, you got a lot of stuff going on. We're just talking about what I'm doing. It's like, it's got to be vertically integrated, right? And so, you know, you kind of create a lifestyle that can hopefully feed the fulfillment part of of your life as well. And, and you know, when you have that, you have kind of this well-oiled machine because, uh, yep. you know, you talked about the routine and how that kind of is vertically in- integrated with, you know, how, how you feel and how you're, the output that you put in. So, um. Curious. So tell me about the shift, right? So, cause you're saying you hear luxury, et cetera. No one cares about that. And someone might hear that and say, what do you mean? What's wrong with that? Yeah. What was the shift that, that had to happen that, you know, and how does it show? Like, is it, uh, yeah, tactically, right? Cause you hear it all the time. Like, okay, that makes sense. But like, how do you actually put that into building a brand? Well, the, so, so I haven't gone away from all of those things, right? Correct. Luxury, privacy, the, what I found, though, is the more and more I got into the industry, the word luxury is abused and not abused negatively. But what's luxury to me might be different than luxury to you, might be different than luxury to somebody else. But it's very, very broadly used and it's not uniform. So it wasn't differentiating anymore to just say that I was luxury because so many people use the word luxury. So I wanted to differentiate myself. And to do that, what what do we do? I mean, what I find one of the biggest gaps in short-term rentals versus hotels, who is our biggest competition, is there's no gym. Typically, there's Mm. not a gym, right? And so what we do at all of our properties is we incorporate health. We incorporate a routine. We provide uh, all kinds of exercise equipment. As a matter of fact, one of our properties is a fitness park. We have a quarter acre that we've turned into a total fitness park. 
both in the backyard and the gym. And we, you know, are like, I don't leave snacks. I hear all kinds of, you know, we leave chocolates and we leave snacks. Well, I don't believe in that for my nutritional purposes. And if I don't believe in it for me, I'm not giving it to you. So I don't leave out unhealthy food for people. I don't, I don't find that to be a good way to welcome people. Like we, what we do is we go for high quality, organically sourced, locally roasted coffee, and we provide that instead. Mm. Um, and so everything that we do is around health. And then the peace and the love and the travel obviously are wrapped into everything that we do. When I work with my design teams, peace and love are are totally integrated into our furnishings and our design. And as a matter of fact, wow. we, have, we have two that we're designing right now in Kissimmee, Florida that we're just launching. And four of the bedrooms are each going to have, one is going to be health, one's peace, one's love, and one's travel. Ooh. So oh, super wow. excited about that. Hold on. I'm curious about that. But before I get ahead of myself, uh, you said something that's so interesting, like, I've never even heard of that. And I was just talking about this, how with, with a buddy of mine when I was traveling, but like, oh man, I kind of broken out of my routine, right? Because you're traveling, et cetera. And one key element for me, my routine is working out in the morning, right? Yep. And so if I don't have a place like that, that has a weight room, I'm obviously already kind of off track there, but I never even, never dawned on me until you mentioned that like, oh yeah, this is a thing, like this is a requirement. So I want to, I want to, put a bow on this and, and hopefully a tie like what so you mentioned this real quick luxury might mean different things to different people what does luxury mean to you luxury to me is very uh modern and updated um bathrooms <laughs> kitchen um just the, the the overall experience of high quality you know what i would expect in, in a luxury is very high quality finishings, cabinets, and doors. I mean, those are the three things. When I feel those things in a house, that's how I know a house was put together at, with, with a five-star contractor, five-star builder, five-star plan, five-star materials. Um, I want to see, I want to feel all of that, right? Um, I want to know that 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 you're not sinking into couches. You have got you got really heavy duty, really nice couches that you would expect out of a out of a out of a luxury brand like in our house or a, a restoration hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so those are you know it's it's a hard question um, because a lot of it is just such a feel, and that's why I say there's no wrong answers. It's yeah. so ununiform. Yeah. But it's a feeling. It's a feeling of how you how how everything around you just you got to touch it. You got to feel it. And yeah, um, you know it's yeah, funny yeah. because when we design a house, I almost tell my designers. I don't need the best designer in the world. What I need is a designer that has all the access to good pricing because, you know, it's very simple actually designing a home when you're in the luxury space. It's like, hey, we don't have to figure anything out. There's a Four Seasons or a Ritz-Carlton close by. There has to be. So Google it, figure out how they furnish the local one, not, not, not the Ritz-Carlton that's a hundred miles away, but the Ritz-Carlton that's closest to us, find out exactly what that one is like because they already have done the research and know what are the colors? What is the design? What is the furniture? All of that. And that's how ours has to look. Oh, Chris, I actually didn't know about that. Do they not, um, whether it's the Four Seasons or a big brand, they don't do like a, a gen, not a, I shouldn't use the word generic, but they don't like rinse and repeat based like nationally, they'll do it locally. No, so exactly. I mean, a lot of them may be the same, but if but they have a research and develop and 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 research R and D research and development team mm -hmm. that is saying, okay, in this market, there's a specific need, so we have to change our color palette, or we have to change the way this looks or that looks, right? And oh, so that's a good they, hack. They're way smarter than we are. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes right, back so. to yeah, it goes back to when you think about these big businesses and their in the real estate business right when they talk about the starbucks they've already done their research market research you kind of can can write on the coattails of of kind of the their r d guy right you know why why try to rinse and repeat which is interesting and the reason i bring up the luxury question too is you know i have a, a partner of mine shout out to rachel greens where she was um actually here on the show can't remember the top of my head uh episode about you guys know I'll, I'll, you guys i'll make sure i'll plug that in but rachel the way she defines luxury, or at least it's it's not so much about the property, but it's almost the experience. It's like that that white glove service. So I think it was it was cool to to see a different perspective because when I had you know she's known as like luxury rentals and all that, but then when you hear it's more of like what, from the time that the guest checks in, and I've heard this from other people, it's like what kind of experience are you giving them, right? And if you think of a luxury experience, it's like you know 
uh hello mr fuad like thanks for coming here we know exactly what you want we laid this out properly for you like we do you know you know you know your customer you communicate with them ahead of time etc so it's really refreshing to hear that there's obviously very different definitions of luxury and based on how you want to position your brand and position your your product uh with respect to what your your truths are around luxury it can reflect that in your brand which you've done very well mm-hmm. that's interesting man so so i guess uh, you you talked about that room, uh, you know, health, peace, love. I'm so curious, man. Please give me a sneak peek. Like, what is that going to be? Health, I can imagine you got a gym in there. What's the peace? You got to have like a sauna, like, uh, or not even a sauna, like a, yeah, like, what are we, you I'm know, thinking here. Can, can I tell you, give the it truth? Away? tell you the truth? I haven't even seen them yet, so I don't know. <laughs> Himalayan salt room. I have with no like idea. yoga mats. Oh man. <laughs> All I know is what I the one thing I know is that my designer begged me that she could use pink instead of red for love. That's all I really know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but we're I still wait. We're, st- we're still underway. We're still underway. All right. Well, we'll be we'll be keeping yeah, we gotta stay close to this one because I'm ex- I love so it's funny because I love the design side of the things too. And it's when I feel like in this industry, it's like you know, even I'm working my wife. So I think people would make the assumption, oh, like Celine loves that, you know. No, man, I love this design stuff. I almost, didn't, you know, went to school for like architecture and stuff. I have an eye for it. I love it. Um, design. So when I think of, you know, I love looking at properties, love buying properties. I love the entire process. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to you, like you said, you broke into this 19 months uh, ago and you've obviously gained so much traction. Uh, what do you think right now is your core competency that you bring to the table as a business owner? Because you didn't just come from hospitality. I would love to for you to highlight a little bit of background because in our lab, what we call experiment, fail, learn, repeat, it's about taking proof, proofs of concepts and applying it yeah. to uh, uh, to different industries, even uh, for lack of a better word. So what, where, what, give us a little bit of context of where you came from and what you think that core competency that you have that you bring to the table uh, in your industry, or I should say in our industry. Yeah, no doubt. So I'm my, my, my superpower is I, I actually kind of hate saying that, but what most people say is, Oh, uh, excuse me. Zone of genius. <laughs> unique, your unique zone of genius. How does that there sound? we go. I like that. I'll take that one. All right. Cool. It's relationship building. It's connecting with people. And so I came out of, I came out, I came from a consulting background in the banking space. And, um, you know, I worked with the C-suite of banks to, to, you know, for a lot of, a lot of different uh, services and things that we would provide to them. And I was just really good at, my, you know, I never had a client in my life. They all became my friends. And so, and, and so when I got into this industry, um, what I, what I have found about the real estate industry and that I love about the real estate industry. Like if you get into the restaurant industry or the gas station industry or whatever it might be, you're, you're, you're so competitive with your competition, right? Like you're, 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 you're trying to do everything you can to be the number one and this and that. What I have found has been amazing in, in the real estate industry is nobody hides anything. Here's my playbook, take it and go, right? Like, I hope I can help you to get better because I can't do all of the real estate. I can't win all of the real estate. There's too much of it out there for me. We can both win. And and so I've been able to take my relationship building, my experience with that, and what I do, my, my niche is I buy property without using any of my own money. I mean, the three sexiest letters in real estate are OPM, right? Other mm-hmm. people's money. So my coach, my, you know, my coach, basically something that's always resonated with me is you can always run out of your own money, but you can't run out of other people's money. And well, so, and, and, and so in all these masterminds that, that I've attended, not only have I gotten better in my in my education, in my finances, in my fitness, in my faith, and all of that, in my friendships, but I've gotten better in my purchasing because in most of them I've generated investors, mm. uh, and so like one of them is cost me about thirty five thousand dollars a year to join, um, and I'm in my second year with them, but I've raised over a million dollars in that room, and so you do the math on that, right? It's wait, I, I really I I can't stress that enough because um what you just said i want to make sure that doesn't slip through the cracks okay you, you're talking about a mastermind group right that you're part of yep, yep. uh and they cost you 35 35k yep so i'm 70 all in now between two years and i've raised 1.4 million in that so just do the math that dude like i talk about that all the time like pay to play and it's crazy because people are like well it, well it depends what people are talking about our people my people like 
the people I surround myself with, it's like, wait, you only invested this much in yourself this year, right? Um, but it's a whole different conversation. But just for context, like I, I'm very curious because I heard this as a recent strategy. Uh, is this a real estate mastermind group or is this unrelated to real estate? It's real estate. Interesting. Oh, but may I ask what mastermind group is? Yeah, it's the board boardroom mastermind with Kent Clothier. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, that's not. Um, the reason I asked that, because uh, I'm part of a few mastermind groups, and uh, I'm part of a, a buy buying a business mastermind group. You probably, probably know Carl Allen, uh, deal maker. And so there's definitely a lot, uh, a good amount of real estate guys in there. But this is, the people you rub shoulders with is just incredible in that mastermind room. Um, but one of the things that jumped out to me too recently is, you know, while it's 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 just as important to be in, um real estate related once you're also not in a real estate mastermind you also become that that sub the sme essentially subject matter expert in the room of like oh you need something to go to fraud for real estate right it's yeah. not it's 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 an extra almost like a bonus uh because I, I you know and i find myself uh, a part of a lot of different masterminds most of them are real estate related most of them also business related and you kind of uh draw draw attention but what's interesting i would love to hear uh it's phenomenal the relationship you've been able to make and what's more phenomenal is we've heard that a lot in like multifamily um but you don't hear it so much in short-term rental so tell me what your kind of approach is uh to investors when you're and again approach and also your strategy when you're uh looking to raise capital what kind of properties do you deploy it in i know we started talking a little bit about it offline what is your kind of your asset class that you choose to focus on uh, for um, uh, Crescent rentals or yeah. retreats, I should say? So we go with larger properties, luxury properties, turnkey properties, or typically typical average price, uh, purchase price is 1.3 to 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. And we are buying in markets that U.S. census data tells us there is population growth estimated for the next five to seven years which also means that there's business growth, infrastructure growth. Um, and all of those things, what they do is they typically directly correlate to appreciation and strong appreciation, right? Um, because I think appreciation happens everywhere all the time. Even if there's a little dip now, you can't be scared. We all know mm -hmm. what happens after the dip. Um, but in those, when you have those data points, you it typically there is directly correlated to strong appreciation. You know, jobs that are being created just everything is new right so we that's what we love we love markets like that phoenix scottsdale huntington beach anything with an ocean anything with a mountain basically tourist attractions like disney world um and we just use the data to differentiate ourselves and you know you hear like disney world well it's saturated there's fifty thousand strs not when you get to 10 bedrooms plus um mm -hmm. and so so we focus on you know so we understand the data in those markets and we make sure that we attack the data that way um, but, you know, our, our ultimate pitch with investors is, you know, you guys are bringing in all the money, the down payment, the furnishings, design, all that. Uh, we finance as much as we can. You know, we're going to pay back within five years and we're 50-50 on the asset. We're 50-50 on the net. I'm taking a 15% of the gross for running the operation um, and they're totally silent and they don't have to worry about anything. We do cost, seg uh, cost, uh, cost segregation studies in order to uh, accelerate that depreciation, get some of that money back in our pocket pretty quickly. Um, and we're looking, you know, the cash on cash is, is, is nice. We're not, we're not going to be one of those brands that's going to be 35% cash on cash because of the purchase prices that we use. But we, we typically find is the appreciation is where we, um, is where, is where we're really counting on the, on the wealth being created. Experiment Nation, I have a special gift for you. If you're in the Airbnb space or if you're thinking of getting into the Airbnb space, you're an operator with multiple units, your first unit, your hundredth unit, just about to get into Airbnb, you are going to want to get this blueprint that I put together for you. Now, I want to give context of how this was put together because sometimes people assemble these uh, ideas in top 10 lists, top five, top this, and it doesn't have any true valued vetted content. What I've done is I've surrounded myself by the best 
top short-term rental Airbnb operators in the world. I co-authored a best-selling book with them called Hospitable Host. I've had them on my platform and interviewed them to get the questions that you guys want to learn the most from into the episode to show the real estate experiment, as you know. And I've also paid tens and thousands of dollars to be sitting in the room to get these notable insights that we implement ourselves as short-term rental operators. I'm a short-term rental specialist. I'm licensed to do it in our respective markets. You know, we build ours in Georgia. We have a management company ourselves. We're Airbnb super hosts. So we not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk, but we still consistently surround ourselves with the best in the space to get us further ahead. And this is what we've put together an Airbnb millionaire blueprint where you don't just hear it from me. You hear it and it's an aggregate list. It's 21 pillars from short-term rental operators worldwide who've implemented this and it's worked. And this is the exact same way we've been able to get results and get the same results from implementing these insights that I've pulled from multiple faces, right? Some people have tons of arbitrage units like TJ Tajani, some like Bill Faith have just a few, some like Michael Shogun has boutique hotels, they've scaled. And whether you have one unit, 10 units or a hundred unit or about to get into your first unit, you're going to want to have this blueprint that you can utilize universally wherever you are in the world want to get this i put together we took a lot of time to put this together this year after all that we've been implementing in our lab for you to have a guide that you can leverage right that you can use and and, and implement we've also given and tagged everybody that we've featured in and giving them credit so you know where the source is coming from and you can check out their instagram you can see that there are vetted individuals that we not only work with and trust but learn from because sometimes you get a lot of different information and i want to make sure i give that credit where you can find out that person and we've also if they've been on our show we've also linked the episode within this free blueprint it's the airbnb millionaire blueprint you want to make sure you go to experiment realestate.com once you get there you'll see the pop-up that says i have something for you just scroll down enter your name enter your email and we'll get it right sent to you don't want to sleep on this we've been putting these together for quite some time and i know that it will serve you regardless of where you are in your journey to have an airbnb millionaire blueprint that has been collectively vetted and has been sourced from operators who are operating at a high scale experimentation you're welcome make sure to go to experimentrealestate.com and get your airbnb millionaire blueprint so that you can also scale to the level of experiment that these practitioners like ourselves have done just for you experimentation we'll see you on the other side that's phenomenal. Well, and when you when you look at those markets, uh, you know, I just came back from a conference. We, we, there was a big section about data that was, I find very, uh, you know, obviously key. Give us the data. I was actually talking to the CEO of, of, of Furnish Finder because we're in, in corporate rentals. And I was like, give us all the data. That's what we want, right? You guys get all the data. What are some key indicators that you look at when you're looking at these markets that appreciate or, or kind of meet the, I shouldn't just say appreciate because there's multiple uh, factors that you're looking at, uh, you know, but what are some of those indicators you mind sharing with us, you know, whether it's kind of, you know, population growth, et cetera, like, is there any, any, any kind of common denominators that you look at that makes you say, okay, this is, this is going to qualify uh, within our buy box? Yeah. So, so population growth is our biggest one. I mean, when you have population growth, it is typically correlated to a lot of business investment, right? So I mean, I can walk you through my Phoenix example, Phoenix. I love this one because a, in the Valley, you only have so much buildable land as it is because you have so many mountains and, 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 and deserts and all of that. Right. So you only have so much buildable land. So supply is limited, which creates more demand in itself. Um, a and then B when you look at you know HP and all this and, and two other semiconductor um, companies that have gone there and invested forty billion dollars um, and or or invested and committed all in at forty billion dollars and five thousand created jobs. What's beautiful about those five thousand created jobs on those companies is that those five thousand created jobs also means there's going to be more restaurants, restaurant employees, you know, traffic enforcement law office jobs, you know, whatever other kind of jobs that come along with that. It, it, it's estimated, I, I believe the last number I looked at was 
aside from those 5,000 jobs, it'll create in the market another 22,000 jobs. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at all of that, that means new purchases of homes, drives the value up in pricing because you have so much competition to buy those homes and you have the remodeling of those homes. So you have, not only do you have, you know, one of the things you heard me say earlier is I buy turnkey properties. And a lot of people say, well, why would you buy a turnkey property when you can go buy a distressed property and, and add value and do all that, which we're not opposed to. Obviously we're smart. We'd like to do that. But here's, here's what I always say is my skill set is on the short-term rental side, right? My skill set is not managing a contractor from Detroit to Phoenix. I live in Detroit. And, and not only is it not my skill set, I can learn it, but that sounds like a freaking nightmare. I mean, it doesn't sound like any fun, right? Like what we do is a lot of fun. I get to go on journeys with my guests. Like that's, I build, it's not like I build relationships. I build relationships with my guests. I mean, like this is fun for me. And so I want to have fun. And so what we do is we buy turnkey properties, but not in a neighborhood that is more than 30% gentrified already. So follow me there. So what I say is I take a five. Not a in a neighborhood. What's that? Not in a neighborhood that is already 30 30 yeah so so what i mean by that is find a property i love this property i drive a i draw a five block radius around that property in every direction right and we're and we're researching five blocks every way and we're saying on that five blocks if we're greater than 30 percent remodeled already there's not going to be enough new money to come in here to really impact my 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 bottom line but if we're still early on if there's only three four five others that are already in that market a, a, a remodeled and now mine comes there i'll pay that after uh, that the arv price for it because now that we've set the comps me and four or five others you know the builders the people with that skill set are going to come in there they're going to grab 20 other and they're going to flip all of those ones right and they're just going to drive up the price of this neighborhood and so, so let me let me let me be clear your your yeah. your you your your strategy is to be early on the on the yeah. block Exactly. So we piggyback, huh. we piggyback on the coattails of the people with the skill set that do the flipping. Right. That's interesting. I've never, never, I thought you would go more for like a proof of concept. So you ride the wave, but you're kind of starting the wave you're saying. Yeah, because we already know that the data we use already tells us as long as you're within X miles of that attraction and X miles of that attraction and that attraction. So as long as we're there, then, then go find the neighborhood by neighborhood, find the one that still has more work to do, but you already see it starting. It's, it's a no brainer, right? Mm. That's very interesting, man. So, and I, and I, it's so, it's so good that you, uh, you're displaying these because these are some uh, uh, topics that are very on top of mind of saying, you know, being very clear on what you, what you're interested in, what you're not. Right. And so being able to say, don't, oh, yeah, you know, everyone's like, oh, do a burr strategy. Okay. That's not for us right now. Right. That, that is, we know exactly what our buy box is. We know exactly what our criteria is. And by the way, we have data to back it up. Uh, so population is a big one. What are, what are like, uh, just another one that we might want to give, cause I love to give tactical insight and that's really good for, for someone to, uh, to look at you and understand and, and see how you're able to actually execute with data i think it's really we hear it often but sometimes you don't see how it tactically kind of transcends i think you give us a perfect example what would be like an, uh, another one or two that, that yeah so once of, we get past the population growth because a lot of markets may have population growth but may not be good for str right mm. once we get past the population growth it's now what is driving the str guest there is there enough so you know again just piggybacking taking that phoenix example a little bit further on there you know you've got a, you've got all the corporate rentals, you know, that's your specialty, but there are plenty of that going on there with all the development that goes on there. That means you have all these kind of corporate rentals. Now, those guys are not coming after my property. What's driving my attraction to Scottsdale. So if you look at like a 12 month calendar, A, you've got 16 major league baseball teams that have spring ball training there. So January 1st through the end of April, every single year without failure, you've got major league baseball galore means the fans are traveling there. They want to see their spring ball. They want to see their teams. The teams are there. We've already hosted two players at our, at our homes. So, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff is, is every year rinse and repeat. You can't break it. Every and year. you're talking about just so I'm clear, we're clear. We're talking about like professional uh, yeah, or, yeah. In, or any avatar. Yep. Yeah. No, pros? Yeah. We've, we've hosted two of the, the professional players there. Can't say their names, but they're of there. Course. Right. Yeah. They come That's every amazing. year, 16 teams. 
So every year you're going to get this kind of traction. Every February, you have the Waste Management Golf Tournament. This year was the Super Bowl. Next year is the Final Four. Every single year, they have the Fiesta Bowl. Every year, they have the Bentley Golf Outing. Every year, they have the 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 Barrett Jackson Auto the the Auto Auction. Every you know, so it's like and and on top of all of that, because it's not enough, it's a bachelorette party capital of America. I mean, more than <laughs> Vegas, more than Austin, more than Nashville. It is the oh, best. is it really? Yeah, it is the best. Wait, I, I just know. went. I just way, I, I just know. went to a bachelor's. I just went to a bachelor's in uh, Phoenix, but like I had oh, no yeah. idea that was this. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the capital of of bachelor and bachelorette parties, and and I didn't know that. By the way, that was like more of a cherry on top when I got there. Yeah, yeah. And on top, I haven't even mentioned the golf courses. Right, the golf there is like yeah. another thing. So all of these things combined, um, you know, it's just it's a, it's a, it's just an outstanding market, and there's so much driving it. So we got through the population growth. There's so much driving there on a 12 month basis, every single year, rinse and repeat on the tourism side. We've got ourselves a, a, you know, this is a win for us. That's awesome. Where where can someone go to get this level of data? uh, And and what is one that you tap into that you, you really like? So the U S census data, that's, that's just available just, you know, via any website. That's what's beautiful about any government data is that's all free. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as STR data, my favorite tool is probably STR Insights. Um, I don't know if I'm biased because I, I I know the owner of that one and he's just a great dude, but and I believe in his mission and 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 his values and, and how he's built his tool. But I don't only stop at one tool. I mean, I, I do use AirDNA, I do use um uh Mash Visor as well, but you know, I use them all to really reconcile against each other. I don't think any of those data tools are perfect. I think it's incumbent on us as a short-term rental researcher to act as a guest, right? I think the most important research you can do is go right into Airbnb and right into VRBO as if you were a guest, Mm. search the hell out of that market. Uh, That's the, that's the end all tell all. I mean, because all the other tools can tell you what they tell you, but if you go into Airbnb as a guest and you're finding that none of that data actually correlates with what you see, you see a bunch of empty calendars, a bunch of really low rates, a bunch of you know, nothing burgers, then, you know, what are we really doing here? Maybe there's some flaws in the data tools, right? So mm-hmm. um, I use those three tools to reconcile them against each other. And then I just do my own research as if I was a guest. That's awesome. Uh, I recently plugged into a uh, data USA.io. Uh, I'll, 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 you guys check it out and you might want to find interest if you're a data geek yourself. Uh, I love that you can kind of compare two markets as well, side by side. And you got like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's backed by like Deloitte and that data wheel and a lot of great data. So never heard of that one. Thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. This is solid. It's very solid. Um, Man, that's awesome. So man, I'm fascinated. And I got a chance to pull up some of your properties here at Crescent Retreats. I mean, you guys are doing some amazing uh, stuff, uh, you know, as far as that goes. And I love the model of, you know, you don't hear that too often. hear people talk a lot about cash, et cetera. Uh, but you're you're really doubling down on the data and the appreciation, the data that backs up the appreciation play. And obviously you're getting these booked at a premium. What can uh, someone who's kind of inspired to go into the space kind of expect? So you're, you're, you're buying these at like 1.1, 1.3, I think is the sweet spot you mentioned. Yep. How large are these homes? Let's unpack a little bit. You said 10 bedrooms. That's phenomenal. Is that across the board? Like what's the range that you typically No, use? so it's market to market. That's interesting. Yeah, right? So kissing me where we actually we just bought two so we closed on one last week and then this week we got under contract the house next door um so one is 12 bedrooms 12 bathrooms one is 10 bedrooms 10 bathrooms um so there'll be 20 we'll have 22 and 22 right next door to each other so we're gonna we have the largest lot in the neighborhood so we're gonna turn it into like a wedding uh facility so we have like 22 bedrooms 22 bathrooms um, and we're already knocking on the 11 bedroom door next uh, house next door to see if we can get that one as well. Um, and that yeah. would just ultimately be the 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 perfect Disney wedding, in my oh opinion. Oh my gosh, um, that's crazy! So we love that. In Scottsdale, we're more in the 2,400 to 4,000 square feet, and we're between four and six bedrooms. Um, you know, Scottsdale, like for instance, you have to have a heated pool. If you don't have a heated pool in Scottsdale, you're just leaving way too much money on the table. Even if you have a pool without a heater, it's only 8,000 for a heater. It'll pay for itself year one. You've got to have a heated pool in Scottsdale. I mean, there's no other choices. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's just, it just depends on market to market. We're about to get into, you know, San Diego is one of the markets that we will enter before then. Mm. 
And in San Diego, we, we're looking at a couple of things. We're going to look at some, be you know, within two, three blocks of the beach, kind of walking three to four bedroom kind of stuff there. And then we're also going to look about 20 minutes in from the beach, look at some four to six acre kind of stuff where we can host some big retreats and masterminds. Um, on some on, on some pretty exquisite properties. Love that. I literally just came back from San Diego like uh, 48 hours ago. Uh, beautiful out there. Uh, even like La Jolla and all that, which I wasn't this time around, but just just uh, beautiful. Let me ask uh, numbers wise, what's the, uh, just because people are probably not familiar with this uh, play and so they're probably not familiar with the kind of context and numbers. What's a typical kind of mortgage slash overhead on a property as large as you know when you're buying that buy a box just for context depends on the interest rates i know right jesus <laughs> so i mean it's crazy because we bought we bought a two million dollar property in scottsdale um in mid 22 that our our payment is um one it's uh like 8300 on that one right and that was a two million dollar <laughs> property we just built one for 1.8 million and now, and we closed earlier this year and that payment is 11,000. So that one's like almost 3,000 more for a 200,000 less acquisition. Uh, so it just depends, but we're in that, you know, I mean, we've got, we've got one as low as $3,100 and we've got them up as high as $11,000. Yeah. Now let's talk about revenue, like on a, what, a name, like a top month on one of those properties and like maybe low, average and lower. So, so we get a feel like what, what kind of, uh, so this and, is the, this is the big leagues we're playing. This is in. the this one. Is, yeah. This yeah. is the one. So annually we're averaging annually between 225 and 260. Um, we're mm -hmm. still very early and very young. So we're, we've, we're still 90% directly with Airbnb and VRBO. Our goal mm -hmm. is a couple of these properties we know will get up to the $300,000 mark. Um, as we as we kind of build up our own clientele and start start executing on a lot more of the direct booking kind of kind of stuff, um, we've started to. There's one property in in specific that that we've started to host engagement parties and started to get word of mouth there. We've hosted three masterminds and three engagements actually at that par property now. So and those ones we charge quite a bit for. Um, and so again, I think a couple of these will kind of plateau out at about two forty. A um, couple of them we can get up to three hundred. The ones in Kissimmee, we expect to be in the 325 to 350 range. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And then um, is that is the play to, when you talk about exit strategy, you mentioned five years, get their money back, et cetera. Is the play indefinitely to, to just refinance uh, down the road or, you know, what, what when you invest 50-50, is it on a case by case where there's a very, very uh, straightforward uh, agreement and handshake that, hey, you know, we're going to run this play for five years and then we're going to do blank. What does that look like for you? I think, strategy -wise? It, I think it's case by case. Um, we, we, I definitely hold the managing member role in being able to make some of those decisions um, as we, as we go forward, but it's definitely case by case. I mean, we, you know, we don't want to make, you know, I mean, you never know where things are going to be in five years. So we're, what I will tell you is it's extremely important to find the right investors that are willing to ride the journey with you, whether it's five years or 15 years. And, mm. and so um, there are investors that I've had that have been willing to write me a check right on the spot. And I just, it just, the, the, the chemistry wasn't there. I knew that there was, it wasn't going to roll right. And, and not, not, not pointing a finger at them. It's just, it might've been me. Right. And, but the chemistry wasn't there and they weren't the right partners for me. And so um, what I always say is I'm not a money whore. Um, mm. I, I won't, I won't, I will not introduce the negative energy into the business. The business has to operate, uh, un, uh, under the infrastructure of really solid relationships. And so when that happens, I know that we have autonomy to make those decisions as we go. And I think that's really important because you never know where yeah. in real estate, God, I mean, last year to a year and a half ago, we didn't think we would be here right now. Right. And so you have to have the nimbleness and you have to have the right partners that are willing to take that journey with you. Yeah. And is it, uh, and I know I don't mean to get so tactical because I, you know, I think as, as individuals, we, we kind of can get a feel, but for those who are, you know, and maybe I'm including myself in this bucket, are looking to, you know, grow more of their partnership. I, I could definitely say I, I definitely can get a good vibe and a good feel, uh, but is there some indicators that you look for where, you know, or common denominators that say, you know, that's probably not going to work out when, when you think of uh, partnerships that fall in that bucket of like, you know what, 
it's not you, it's me, but uh, I'm probably not going to move forward with this. Is there, what stands out? I do. And for me, it's very specific to me, right? So when I answer this, I don't answer this on behalf of anybody else. It's, it's very specific to me, but what, what I, what I offer my investors is a very passive opportunity. And so, you know, I, t- I always tell the story about the, 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 the pizza entrepreneur, the pizza, this gentleman uh, that I know from my community that really wanted to invest, um, you know, we, we kind of got really far down the path. And then, you know, the whole, you know, hey, I've got 13 pizza stores. I know exactly how to run a business and I've got to be involved and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I was like, nope, not happening. Right. Like. I'm not going to come there and I'm not going to show you how to knead the dough. I'm not going to show you how to box the pizza. I'm not going to show you how to do any of that. Similarly, I'm living and breathing this every single day. And Mm -hmm. so my team, my infrastructure, our process, that's how it's going to roll. I'm not, I'm not close-minded to say, look, if somebody has got great suggestions for me, I will take them all day long. Don't take me wrong. I'm not close-minded, but a suggestion is a suggestion and that's where it ends. At the end of the day, I'm living and breathing this. So I know what will work. I know what we'll try. I will test anything that I can that I haven't thought of. But at the end of the day, I'm going to hold autonomy um, of this because I'm the one driving the car, right? And so uh, when when I got to a point with that gentleman that I knew he wanted to be way more than passive, what I said to him was, listen, I said, out of the goodness of my heart, I swear I will show you how to do this. It sounds to me like you want to do this. Let me just teach you how to do it. Let's just meet up at a coffee shop. Let's grab your computer. Let's do all the research. I will show you how to buy these properties. I'll show you how to run this business. I don't want any of your time. I don't want money. I don't want any of that. I'll just show you how to do it. it it's clear to me that you want to do this. So just do that, all right? But you're not the right investor for me. Um, and so mm-hmm. for me, it's, it, it became, when I first started doing this, you know, I had... A, I had the fortune of, 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 of my wife who also brings in a very good income. And so I got to be a little risky when I left corporate America to be entrepreneurial and be risky, right? So we could shift from where it used to be. We're really heavily dependent on my stability. We could be really heavily dependent on her stability and I could shift and get out of corporate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not everybody maybe has that, that fortune. Not everybody has that luck. Not everybody has even the guts maybe to roll the dice and leave what's a really comfortable and stable job and income and W2 to do this. So I was really passionate about helping people that didn't understand how to take their money and invest it, how to, how to get started on that path. And it doesn't mean you have to go quit your job and start now, but if you don't want to retire at 65 and you're only 30 today, how can we, how, how can I help you retire at 40 or at 42? It doesn't yeah. have to be 65. doesn't have to be 32, right? Like what's the middle there. And so I was really passionate about the unaccredited investor. And the, the further I got into this, I realized that that's difficult because those non-accredited investors are the ones that you're going to have to handhold and really help and involve and answer a lot of questions for and with. But when you bring in accredited investors only, and not that I'm doing a fund, but people that qualify as accredited investors, yeah. I mean, they're big boys. They, they understand how to invest. They understand the risk with investing. They understand that a, one year might not be as good as another year. They understand that you know, mm-hmm. there's a dip in the value this year. We have to hold it out until next year when things rebound. I mean, so it's just a, it's just a much uh, different level. So I am now focused on accredited investors. Um, again, not because we are a fund and not that we act like a fund. It's just that's the type of investor that we are looking at attracting. That's awesome. And uh, and this is great, by the way. Uh, you covered so many areas that I think are going to help uh, so many people. I think uh, partnerships is is a big theme right now in the lab, as we call it, uh, that we've seen. Uh, and the reason it's critical is, uh, you know, allows the ability for, you know, I think you said it, uh, you, you can have, uh, you said it very well in the beginning, you can, you can, you can grow with other people's money, or you'll never run out of other people's easy money. easy to lose your own money, right? Yeah, it's easy to lose your own money in real estate, but you can't lose other people, you can't run out of other people's money. Yeah, yeah, which is, is key. And I think you put some context into what a partnership actually looks like uh, or when that is functional, to say the very least. Uh, tell me about, uh, you know, I think it'll be helpful for experimentation because we do like to give some some tactical kind of, you know, hey, you know, let me send you down this path so you can kind of discover for yourself. But when you when you structure these partnerships, are they just uh, individual uh, LLCs or do you say, hey, I'm going to, and then, and the reason I'm curious is, you know, kind of in a similar, um, I shouldn't say similar path, but for those who are kind of operators, 
what's the best way to structure this? Do you kind of structure a joint LLC and then your other, um, and again, not, we're not giving any, you know, yeah, structuring we're not, we're, advice. Not <laughs> we're not, we're not attorneys, but I just want to just get an insight when you lift the hood, what does it look like? Do I yeah. come in with my own entity and your entity and my yep, entity operates exactly. this, or is it a joint entity? And then, and then Crescent Retreats is, is kind of operating that entity. Like just give yeah, a high level understanding sure. how you create so, those partnerships. So, yeah, absolutely. Every home has its own LLC, mm -hmm. it's, is its own LLC. And that LLC is formed by two members, my one of my investing entity and then your investing entity. Um, and then, you know, so whatever, you know, whatever entity actually purchases that home, that's our joint LLC. And then when we distribute money, that LLC distributes to your entity, distributes to my entity, and that's how we each earn our money then back. Um, and then Crescent Retreats actually owns nothing. It's very akin to Airbnb, which owns no real estate. It's literally just a name. It's just a marketing name. It's just a branding name, just for experience from one to the next. And uh, the, the guest communication, the customer experience that they can, ex you know, that they can expect out of any one of my homes, that's just the Crescent Retreats experience. And you guys outsource your cleaners? We outsource our cleaners. Um, I've had conversations uh, about acquiring um, in Phoenix because we have five there now. Um, so we're, we're, it makes sense for us to do that and then potentially take on some other short-term rental uh, you know, uh, uh, properties for cleaning uh, solely. I don't really have a burning desire or passion to get into overall management for others. Um, but if I were to acquire my cleaning company, definitely cleaning I would is something I would take on and grow. Loving it. You kind of already given us this game uh, as far as the blueprint where you're going, but what is next for Crescent Retreats? I mean, you got some significant partners, you're growing the portfolio, but I always like to say, you know, he said this on this day and he did it, right? Let's so it. What, is, what is it that you're kind of want to put out here into the universe, into the lab so we can tap back in maybe you know, a year from now or so that you want to put out into the universe and say hey man this man he did what he said he was going to do what is that, what is that i'll tell like? you i'm two more years i'm looking at my watch only because it's may 4th 2023 so mm. um, holding me to it by the end of 2025 the goal is to have a 50 million dollar real estate portfolio Mm -hmm. um, and so to revert, you know, it's always start with the end in mind and then reverse engineer, right? Um, so starting with that, I want to have a $50 million real estate portfolio um, that is cash flowing. Um, that, that gives me options. Option A is to make an exit at a premium, uh, at a premium um, to the value of the real estate. And, and you can do that because it is a cash flowing entity and a Marriott Bonvoy or a hedge fund is way willing to pay a premium for that because it's easy for them to take on a whole portfolio of properties instead of buying one individually at a time, right? Um, so that's one, um, you know, shortly here, you know, that, well, well, just kind of breaking that down, if our average purchase price remains at 1.3, that kind of leads us to about 38 to 42 homes, depending on where we end up on that side. Mm -hmm. So we're already at, we're launching number eight right now. Um, we will be at number 20 by the end of the year. Uh, I've already got kind of the, the investors lined up that'll get that, that give me that clear path to 20 by the end of this year. Um, and so we, we, we believe we can do 10 more next year and 10, 10 more the year after. Um, at which point it's, if we make an exit, it's kind of rinse and repeat, start all over again. And if we do not make an exit, then we get to run and operate a $50 million real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm, mm, mm. you said it, bad man, bad man. Hey, listen, I gotta, I gotta share this with you because I geek out about around this business buying slash selling stuff as well. Uh, uh, do you know who Roland Frazier is? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So his his whole thing is because uh, I'm in a lot of buying slash selling business mastermind, and he actually does he carves out sections of his business to sell. And so I think what would be interesting for you as you grow this, even the whole idea of acquiring a, a, a cleaning, cleaning company, company yep. that in itself would become its own asset, which then you could even roll up and be like, Hey, listen, here's the price with the cleaning company. Here's the price without. Yep. And now you can actually have two different exits, uh, which would be a uh, phenomenal for you. Um, you know, we're kind of uh, using that play on the corporate side where we're essentially trying to build a uh, very deep rooted corporate relationships uh, uh, to, to be able to sell that book of business at some point and, or, other real estate if we choose to. So I always find that it's so fascinating when you understand business and you understand real estate, you're able to kind of have, uh, you know, uh, two businesses, if not more in, in one. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's it, man. That's I love that. So, so listen, man, I, I can't thank you enough for coming in here, you know, dropping the game, uh, you know, to my community, uh, obviously with the health, peace, love and travel. Uh, we totally align with that. Uh, that is uh, something I'll be tapping into. I love what I'm seeing, you guys. I mean, I want to give you a, a shout out, but I was just like looking at the you know, Crescent retreats, the level of quality of these properties. I'm just like, ooh, I'm kind of geeking out on it. Um, where where can people uh, tap in, and, uh, A, with you, and B, if they want to even book a stay? Uh, I know right now you say you're mainly on Airbnb, which I've seen, but um, you know, where can we find out more about these beautiful properties that you got, as I'm looking at here, uh, and at the same time, follow the man behind uh, that's operating these uh, wonderful properties? Absolutely. So check us out on Instagram. That's, that's always the best way to, to link up with me got two pages one is for our brand it's crescent retreats so, as simple as that and then my personal one is my name for ad bazzi f-o-u-a-d-b-a-z-z-i underscore airbnb what my friend this was a good one and just like that i will make sure that we include that in the show notes if you're driving make sure you keep your hands on the wheel <laughs> this one is in the books for sure and we'll include everything make sure you tap in to what Mr. Bazi is doing here uh, in multiple markets. And it's incredible what you've done here. So I wanted to tip my hat towards you and sh- a special yeah. shout out to Crescent Retreats. And just like that, Experiment Nation, we are out. Experiment Nation podcasting has changed the way we operate as real estate investors ourselves, and they can do the same for you. Podcasting has been the source of the master classes that we get thanks to the world class real estate investors and practitioners and specialists that come into the lab from all realms from short term rentals to mid term rentals to real estate syndications to even software as a service owners, founders, entrepreneurs have helped enrich our experiments by giving us the education, helping us build a network, and lastly, and most importantly, a brand association to open up multiple doors for our respective businesses. If you understand the power that podcasting can have, and you know that you need one for your brand, please, you can rely on our team. InvestedTalent.com is my team and the team that helps this podcast, The Real Estate Experiment, become the fruition each and every single week to educate my community, build relationships on the air, and continue to build our brand. If you know that you need to do the same for your brand and you haven't pulled the trigger yet, maybe because you don't know how, our company, InvestedTalent.com, does the end-to-end from the time that you record to the time that it is published to even repurposing content on multiple social media platforms. That's what my team can do for you. Simply go to InvestedTalent.com and book a discovery call to see how my team can help you launch your podcast.